All right. Hi, Margie. It's a huge pleasure. And thank you so much for your time and joining us today for the 20 questions. No problem. Thank you for having me. <laughs> All righty. Let's get started. Which horse has had the most impact on your career? That's, that's a difficult question. I've been asked that a lot. I've been very fortunate to have a lot of different horses that I've learned things from. And each one is, has given me something. Uh, probably Daydream was very instrumental when I started because it was the first horse I ever did the bigger classes with. And he was five years old when I started riding him and I, I didn't know any better. And I was young. He was, he was six when we first started doing the Grand Prix and I won my, I did my first Grand Prix on him and I won my first Grand Prix on him. So that was instrumental. I've been very lucky to have salute was another fun one. Parent, in Creek's Perrin was a great horse that I, he was the first one I took to the Olympics and to championship events with. Um, at this point, it's Royce and, and Dacus. I just, uh, Hidden Creek's Laurel was, was great. I, I'm not a good one. It's like asking you, which is your favorite child. So I have a really hard time picking just one. No, I, I'm not sure. Well, you're fortunate you've had a lot, so. I've been very lucky. Yeah. <laughs> All right. What's your favorite LGCT show? That was a little bit easier. I think for for me, because I'm from South Florida, Miami is is very special because, you know, you have the ocean. I, I grew up around the water, so I love that atmosphere. And being from South Florida, I feel like it's a little bit of the hometown. And uh, for the horses, I think actually Vulcan's Ward is my favorite one because it's just more horse country and there's a lot of room and it's nice permanent stabling. And I think for the horses, that's one of my favorite places. And and I love the size of the, the field and the ring that we compete in and the schooling areas. So that's probably and the, the whole setup. I mean, the VIP area, everything is just amazing. So that, that would probably, I know a lot of people say Mexico, it looks fantastic. I just have never been there. I've seen it online and it looks great, but I, I probably Miami just, that's my hometown area. <laughs> Well, I think you made a great choice, or so probably the right choice, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> Horses first. That's what Jan always said uh, when he was building the place. So Absolutely. And that's how it's set up. It's fantastic. The grooms all love it. The the clients love it. It's it's horses first, but yet the, the VIP is, is top class all the way, and it's just got everything. <laughs> oh, that's nice to hear. Okay, what's the one thing you can't go to the show without? Probably my husband. <laughs> I mean, I think mean, he keeps me in line. He keeps me grounded. Yeah. Uh, he takes care of the horses when I, I uh, get the little kinks in them and things like that. And he's just he's just a real rock. You know, he's like a steady Eddie. And and it's good mentally for me, physically for the horses. And, and I, he's just a good person to have around. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. OK, if you could compete with any horse past or present, which horse would it be? Probably Jen Twist. I remember watching him as a kid, and 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 when I watched him, he was my favorite horse to watch jump. He would crouch down like a cat and just kind of pounce off the ground. And I never saw a horse that could jump from so many different distances and at such high speed and do everything he could to miss the jumps. And with so many different riders, I remember watching him when he did the world when he did the wag, and with every rider, he just got higher and higher. Yeah. And he was just, it was just amazing for me. I, I loved watching him. Yeah, amazing. All right, which rider style do you admire the most? That's a difficult one also. I mean, I, you, it's funny there. I, I mean, it's, it's like asking me who is my favorite horse. As a kid, I watched so many different riders and mainly up being from North America, everyone from Ian to Bill Steinkraus to Rodney Jenkins to Joe and Conrad to, Melanie Smith, the, I mean, you learn something from everyone and it's a type of sport you never stop learning. And now that I'm able to go to Europe and see some of the top riders there, you learn something from all of them. It's, it's great to be able to go and, I mean, they all have, have exceptional, be it Man, Manley is great to watch. Marcus Anning's got a fantastic uh, position. He's really part of the horse. I mean, there's just so many things you can learn from so many different people. So yeah. I, I am really bad at picking just one. I know I didn't answer your question very well, but I just feel like you can learn something from everybody. Absolutely. That's the only way we go forward. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's just what I've always done as a kid. When I didn't have my own horses, I'd sit at the rail and just watch and 
and learn how different people did things and you take a little bit from from everybody yeah right okay any superstitions or specific habits or routines before a big class i don't know that i have anything specific as far as superstitions i'm not the most superstitious uh i usually try and just concentrate on the class a little bit i'm um, uh, usually kind of joking around and doing things like that. It helps kind of get it's more of a distraction. Maybe I don't know. It's, they, they, I don't know that I have any special routine though. It, whatever works, works for you anyway. <laughs> well, I get, I, I know with some people I maybe get a little annoying because some of the riders have told me and when I'm in nation's cups with them that I need to, they need like 20 minutes away from me. I have to have a timeout. <laughs> Because they, they don't want to, I, I tend to talk too much, so, oh, <laughs> and so they want to concentrate, so I, I get my time out time. Uh, well, I like to be around you before I was. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, if there was one round, you could re-jump, which one would it be? Uh, probably Aachen. A few years back, I, I was with Perrin, and, and it had poured rain, and he had, Jumped fantastic earlier in the week, and I'm not always the best at pulling up. And he was getting higher and higher because he was kind of slipping a little bit on the grass. Mm -hmm. And it was the Grand Prix, and I only had like two jumps left. Anyway, I should have. Everyone asked me, "Don't you have any self preservation?" And I'm like, "I don't know." I was he was going clean, and I jumped into the triple, and he was jumping so high and slow, and I should have probably pulled out. And I just kept kicking and tried to get through, and it was it was ugly fall. <laughs> Uh -huh. So if I did it again, I would probably have taken the better idea and kind of pulled out. But I, it's it doesn't ever go in the, into my head to do that. <laughs> but hindsight's always twenty twenty. <laughs> All Hopefully. right. What's the best moment in your sporting career? You know, I've been fortunate to have so many, but I think one of the highlights was probably the first year I went to Europe to show. And I had Hidden Creek's Laurel, and she was just eight years old, and I had never been on the European tour. And we, Rome was our first horse show, and it was a really big deal to me, and it was beautiful. And and uh, she was double clean in the Nations Cup, and then she was it was back when the Grand Prix, you had to do three rounds, and she won the Grand Prix, and and it was just very special riding. That was one of the first times I rode for the, my country in Europe. It was the very first show we went to, so that was that was really special. That was my first big show out of North America. All right. If you could choose to be a rider, past or present for a season of the tour, who would you choose to be? Again, my answer is probably the same thing as before. There's just a, a ton of, I mean, there's, I mean, I know it sounds, I'm, I'm not trying to <laughs> sound cheesy, but when you were with me too, I mean, that you guys were unbeatable and that was the type of horse I would love to have ridden, you know, she, He's fast and careful and little, and everyone thinks I look for these big horses, but I really do. <laughs> they just kind of find me. I mean, I just, I, and I can't be too picky. They're hard enough to find. So I don't know. You, you guys were a great combination. So that would be one. Um, I'm trying to think. Gem Twist, I would, you know, that he was another fantastic combination with so many different people, with Greg, Leslie, Laura, all the people that rode him at WEG. Um, Bill Steinkraus is amazing i watched some of his old videos and classic style i i don't know that i could pick just one person i'll probably yeah. go on and on and ramble forever so <laughs> well let me tell you i think if you had have ridden ito i think you would have also had a lot of success because i think he would well you guys were a great combination you never know but he he just looked like a lot of fun he was a lot of fun yeah, yeah no thanks. it was a special <laughs> horse <laughs> absolutely yeah Okay, if you had not become a professional show jumper, who would you have liked, what would you have liked to have done? I think anything with animals. When I was a kid, I, I always uh, thought I would maybe work in a zoo. <laughs> but I just loved animals. I mean, I, I don't know what I would have been without. I, I went to school to, my mother was a teacher and then a principal, so, and I liked working with some of the young kids. So, I, I don't know, maybe a, a teacher of elementary school. But ideally, I would have always liked to work with animals in some manner. Okay. <laughs> Zookeeper. <laughs> that way, when I, when I was young, that's what I actually, first I think I want to be a football player, but girls weren't allowed to play football. 
So I have two older brothers, so I want to be just like them. Okay. Okay. So then my next question, how did you get into riding? I've always loved animals and I always loved sports. And uh, my best friend from grade school, she was, she rode out at the barn and I went out with her and I fell in love with them. And uh, I was kind of obsessed about it. And I had a choice of, my parents said, you could either keep playing your guitar lessons or, or ride. And, and uh, so I got one, one uh, lesson a week. And then I started riding out at the barn when I was like eight or nine years old. And I worked in the dog and cat kennels in exchange for extra rides and, and uh, then grooming around the barn and did some, it, I just did anything I could to earn, earn extra rides. You didn't, instead of earning money, they would pay you in, yeah. in lessons or, or uh, getting to ride pleasure riding or, or anything with the horses there. Mm. And then I was able to, I, I was very fortunate. The people that owned the place saw how eager I was to ride and they gave me a job breaking the young ponies and horses that they raised and re-breaking some of the race track horses off the racetrack. And with my size, I had a lot of different horses that I could ride. Hmm. So I started, started off just my, my best friend rode and that's from first grade she rode and I went out with her and no one in my family ever rode. And is, um, was that best friend? Is she still your best friend? <laughs> She's not. She moved to New York, but it's funny when we showed in New York, when we had the GCT show there, she came to, and she still comes sometimes. She's most of my friends from, we're still really good close friends and they were all friends from the barn. We still all stay in touch and we have reunions and, and my best friend actually, I mean, we're all really, really close, but they don't ride anymore. So I don't get to see them as much. Um, one of them's a hairdresser now. She owns a beauty salon and, and, uh, and Andrea, I do get to see her. She still loves the horses. Actually, she just came, she hadn't ridden for probably 15 or 20 years. And she just came up to visit maybe a couple months ago. And I, she got on one of the horses and went on a trail ride with me. So it was kind of fun. So we still get to see each other. And she, she hadn't ridden forever and she still loves, you know, so once it's in your blood, I don't think it really ever disappears. <laughs> for sure not. <laughs> So then what advice would you give to a young writer? You know, just to, to be very determined and don't, don't, uh, it's a lot of hard work, but it's worth it. And, and, uh, but don't feel defeated. You're going to have a lot of, a lot more bad days than you have good days and you have to learn from your mistakes. No. And uh, it's really, if you want to go forward, it has to really be your passion. You have yeah. to really love yeah. what you do and be willing to, to take the, the good days um, or far and few in between and to take the bad days with them. And you just, the main thing too, is be willing to, to learn from everything, you know, just not always when you're on a horse, but on the ground, learn from the horses, just learn by working with them and, and, and working with them on the ground and watching other riders. I used to watch at the, at the ring all the time, all the top riders, you can learn from so many different avenues and, watching classes and I loved, I would, I remember offering to groom for free so I could go to the big shows just so I could learn to, to see some of the top riders and I got to, to see them compete. Mm -hmm. and, and I learned a lot just by watching, reading books, anything. Yeah. So from all of the experiences you've had, what's the best piece of advice you've ever received? Oh, what's the best piece? Well, my first instructor said to take the word can't, out of your vocabulary. She actually didn't say it to me because I unfortunately thought that there was nothing I couldn't do eventually. <laughs> but she, I heard, I, she said that in a lesson with someone and I remember that was very interesting. Yeah. Um, that, that was probably a good piece of advice. You have to just, you have to learn to work through things. If at first you don't succeed, you got to keep, keep trying. Yeah. I mean, you just, that was, and I got a lot of good advice from, from my parents sometimes in the form of, of jokes, but <laughs> <laughs> uh, and my father actually was very much, he said, you know, actually one of the best piece of advice is not even just horse, horse advice was, he said to me, uh, if you always do the right thing, you don't have to look over your shoulder mm -hmm. and you can always look yourself in the mirror. And that, that was a good piece of advice, both being true to your horses and yourself and to other people. Yeah. And I, I'll never forget that. You know, he says, if you're ever questioning it, make sure you can, look yourself in the mirror and be comfortable with who you are. Great. 
That's a fantastic piece of advice. <laughs> well, it's not all horse oriented, but it's just as, as a per, being a person, I'm trying to treat people like you'd want to be treated. Exactly. Yeah. All right. So then, um, if you could have three people around for dinner, past or present, who would it be? It'd probably be my parents. And uh, I know this sounds silly, but Robin Williams, I always got a kick out of, I, I listened to him. He was one of the funniest and, and he was so quick ad-libbing in his mind. I would just like, to, I, it worked so fast. Mm -hmm. I would say I had seen some videos of him where people just gave him different things from the audience and they gave him props and he would go off on these tangents and he was so funny. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was just, I mean, it, he was like that border, genius borderline insanity. He was just so quick, and and it, I was just amazed watching him. And I would like to see, my dad was very good with, he had a great sense of humor and was good with puns, and I'd like to see how they worked back and forth together. <laughs> Interesting. Okay, what are the three things on your bucket list? Only uh, three. I, yeah, I... I'd love to go to Africa. We talked about that a lot. I'd love to go I do see a safari. I've seen lots of pictures from lots of different friends. Um, we got married in the Caymans and we kept saying we'd go back there. I would, I would enjoy doing that. Um, and then we went on a family vacation with all of the family we had in, in Hawaii. That would be something that would be kind of fun to do too. Okay. I, I love being around family and we all got, had condos and, and we, we were all together and it was a beautiful place to go to. I'd only been to Hawaii, I think, once, but that was really fun. Nice. All right. What's the one thing people don't know about you? Oh, there's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, maybe that I played clarinet in, in school, both in the orchestra. I did, we did some concerts and then uh, I tried the marching band, which I wanted to go to the football games. So uh, I played clarinet in the band through high school. Uh, that's, that's probably one thing people don't know. And then uh, I became a cheerleader, but mainly just so I could go watch the football games because I couldn't be a football player. So I, I wanted to go and, and I figured, well, if I became a cheerleader, I could go watch anyway. I was very upset that they didn't let girls play football because <laughs> I would play with my brothers at home all the time. But uh, those are probably a couple things. I don't know if I should say any more. <laughs> uh, keep going. <laughs> There's a lot. <laughs> well, okay, on to my next question. Describe yourself then in three words. Uh, uh, probably stubborn, uh, loyal to a fault, and a bit of a class clown. I always got in trouble in school for, for being a class clown and, and just plain talking too much. <laughs> I was a little hyperactive. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's enough now. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what are the causes then close to your heart? You know, any, I, I, the Make-A-Wish Foundation in America, it was really close to, I was able to, to, it was kind of full circle. The Mrs. Kramer that I rode for died of bone cancer. And then later in life, this, this girl came to me and wanted to meet Daydream and myself and, and um, she had bone cancer and she was, she was only like 13 or 14 and, and, uh, at, and she was going to get her leg amputated and she had no hair or anything. And she was actually Julie Crone, who, who I was teaching at the time was rides races. She was there and Michael Mass was there and Greg and they all went riding with us and they were really good with her. And, and she was just seeing the spirit that she had and how it was really inspiring to me. And she ended up beating it. She got her leg amputated. I saw her. She came to a horse show later, and it was amazing. She was a beautiful young woman. She turned out that she had kids, and she they had only given her less than a year to live. And she was just inspiring what she went through, and, and that's always been something close to my heart that I tried to do something. It was an amazing feeling, feeling being able to be around her and, and then seeing her beat it. It was just really inspiring. Wow, beautiful. Okay. I just think someone that age, I don't know how I would deal with something like that. And she was, she was so positive and uplifting. It was, it was a, a truly amazing thing. It's mm -hmm. hard to put into words. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Then if you could switch lives with anyone for a day, who would it be? 
Oh, when I was younger, I wanted to be um, Jeannie from My Dream of Jeannie, where she could just, you know, she was like a genie that that lived in a bottle when you were, and they could do whatever wishes, and maybe maybe a genie from a a bottle, and then you blink and and get rid of all the it, you know, all the separation in the world, and have more unity, and maybe have, get rid of some of the poverty and pollution, and that would be kind of neat, and. Then, uh, also, when I was younger, I wanted to, I wanted to be Doctor Doolittle because he could talk to the animals. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you see this sport in ten years' time? Where do I see the sport? Yeah, I see it growing immensely as long as we get through this pandemic right now. But I think, I mean, the the global tour is really up the game quite a bit, and the Grand Prix are getting bigger all around the world. It's getting much wider spread. It's growing in all different countries. Um, I'm hoping that it gets more recognition in other countries. In Europe, it's really big. In our country, it's a little slower because we have so many different things. Um, I, I'm, I just see it growing and growing. I think it's heading in a good direction. Excellent. Well, Margie, I have had a wonderful time asking all these questions and finding out all these interesting <laughs> facts about you and your and your life and everything else. Um, thank you so much for your time. And um, I look forward to hopefully seeing you sooner rather than later. That would be, be a nice thing and good to see you. <laughs> thank you. When we get together, I can tell you some more jokes I can't tell online. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs>